Okay. Here we started discussing about the ALE RFC is used for communicating or integrating from SAP to SRM system which we are going to discuss today. And the next one is the uh, ALE configuration. ALE configuration is used for goods received that is confirmation in SRM system. Nothing but goods received in SAP system. In SAP system and invoice verification invoice verification that means once we have a once we have a confirmation once we receive the goods from the supplier we have to pay the amount that means vendor or supplier will send the invoice invoice and for that one we have to update our system for payment purpose for that reason what we have to do we have to post the invoice verification we have to post the invoice verification that needs to be updated to the any backend system for financial purpose. For that reason, we have to have a ALE IDAC configuration. ALE IDAC configuration. And if we if we procure services, if we procure services, okay, for services we don't need to have a ALE configuration. We don't need to have a ALE configuration. For that reason, what we can do directly, we can have that service entry sheet can be replicated into the ECC system with help of RFC communication. RFC communication. We don't need to have a specific configuration for service entry sheet. Okay. When we integrate SAP and SRM system, that configuration is sufficient to have a shopping cart related information. Need to, okay, can be passed to the ECC system or PO can be replicated from SRM to PO, ECC system or financial data can be replica, can be validated from any backend to the SRM system or service entry sheet can be replicated from SRM to ECC system with a SAP and SRM integration. That is the basic integration which is required for any uh, uh, purpose. If we want to integrate the SAP, SRM and SAP system, we have to have integration. With that integration itself, we can do this, all this information. Okay. And you have a SAP HR data. You have a SAP HR data. You want to replicate, if you want to replicate HR related org structure from SAP to SRM system, that can be done with ALE IDA configuration. ALE IDA configuration. That means HR data is available. HR data is available from SAP ECC system. If we want to replicate, if we want to replicate from SRM to SAP system, okay, that can be done with that. That can be done with only HR uh, ALE integration. This one we are going to discuss and we are going to replicate the information from HR to our SRM ARG structure. SRM ARG structure. That means here we have a RFC ALE IDA configuration. ALE IDA configuration. Okay, in addition to that, one more type of communication we have BAPI. Okay, and we are going to discuss about the what the purpose of BAPI and what is the BAPI means business application programming interface. Okay, we are going to discuss that one also, where it can be utilized. Okay, and these are the transactional data information. These are the transactional data information. Okay, and if we want to have a master data replication, master data means we have a different types of master data. In SAP system, in SAP system, master data purchasing related master data. purchasing master data. For this one we have a material master. And vendor master. Vendor master. Okay. This master data. Okay. Here we have a material master data purpose. Material master, we have a CRM middleware settings. Okay. 
CRM middleware settings. That means we are going to see in the system how we can have a material master application configuration. Material master configuration. Material master, config, uh, material master related configuration and we are going to replicate material master from SAP system to SRM system as a delta replication or initial loading. In addition to this, we need to replicate unit of measures, currencies and everything from SAP to SRM system with the help of CRM middleware settings. CRM middleware settings. Okay. And vendor master data, vendor master data, we have a direct program. Okay, through program we are going to replicate. We have a program like a transaction course. We have a BBP get VD and BBP UPD VD. Okay, in addition to this one, if we want to like in the projects, right, what we do, we will always try to sync vendor master data from SAP to SRN system. For that one, we have a batch job which we are going to schedule. Based on the batch job, the system is going to keep vendor master data sync from SAP to SRN system always. Okay, this is SAP and SRM integration. This is SAP and SRM integration. In addition to this one, this SAP SRM system can be integrated to the planning systems also. Planning systems. That means if we have any planning related one, that also can be integrated with RFC communication. For example, here we have a SCM system. SCM for planning purpose. Once the planning is done, that planning related one data like a purchase requisition or planning information needs to be replicated into the SAP SRM system that can be done with the communication. Like we have already like a uh, integration from SAP to SRM system or SAP to or like SRM to SCM system for that one. Once we have that one, we have a batches of schedules to have a planning information from SCM system to SRM system or SAP planning to SRM system. Okay. Next one, we have a one more component, like one more system, supplier self-services. Supplier self-services. Okay, we have a supplier self-services, supplier self-services, that is SUS, okay, supplier self-services. This can be integrated, supplier self-services will be integrated to the SAP system, integrated to the SAP system with the help of PI. PM is process integration. Process integration. Okay. And SRM system also will be integrated to the SUS with the help of PA. With the help of PA. Okay, SAP level, if we implement, if we have a ECC 6 with enhancement fact for system, okay, whenever you have a PDP related, that is the purchase requisitions available in SAP system, if we want to replicate those purchase requisitions from SAP planning system to, that is ECC 6 enhancement fact for system to SRM system, we have to have a PI, that is the process integration should be activated to have those purchase requisitions from ECC 6 enhancement pack 4 to SRN system. You will, here I will write ECC 6 with EHP 4. Okay, we have to have a PI for PR's replication. PR's replication. Before this version, that means ECC 6 with the enhancement pack 3, we don't need to have a PI integration. Okay, we have a program, we can run that program and those program can replicate SAP purchase requisitions into the purchase order. Okay, purchase order. And the next one is SRM, right? SRM is a GUI. 
SRM is a, like here I will log in and show that one and these are all okay I am getting into the SAP SRM system This is the GUI where most of the configuration, most of the configuration, that is more than 99%, 90% of the configuration will be done in the GUI level. That means graphical user interface. And whatever the end user do the transactions, end user will do the transactions in user end user interface. That is enterprise portal. That is enterprise portal. Okay. And that means SAP SRM backend is integrated to the user interface. User interface that is enterprise portal. It is developed with ABAP Web Dine Pro. ABAP Web Dine Pro. This is connected to the SAP SRM system with the help of ABAP Web Dine Pro IVUs. ABAP Web Dine Pro IVUs. Okay, here we can see. Okay. This one is coming from SRM 7. Okay, once it is uh, integ uh, architecture is completed, right, I am going to discuss like what type of SAP SRM versions we have, what are the main differences between those versions. Okay, among those versions we will discuss. In SRM 7, SRM 7 interface, user interface is developed with ABAP Web Dine Pro. That is ABAP Web Dine Pro uh, SAP Enterprise Portal. Okay. Well, and that means every uh, all end users getting into the SAP, uh, SAP Enterprise Portal interface and they create a shopping cart or purchase order con uh, conversion or RFX or contract. Whatever they want, they will do in the user interface only. They are not getting into the SRM GUI. SRM GUI. And we have a catalog systems. In catalogs, right, we have a different types of catalogs. We have a different types of catalogs. How those are integrated, we will see here. Integration point of view. Catalogs, we have a different types of catalogs. Okay. CCM2 this is before SRM7, okay, and SRM MDM catalogs, it is mandatory from SRM7, MDM7, and we have a supplier is there. Supplier provides all the catalog information. They provide the required information to the client. Okay. That is nothing but punch out catalogs. That means we need to integrate. We need to integrate catalog systems, punch out catalogs. That means SAP, a supplier provided catalog. Supplier provided catalog. Okay. Is nothing but punch out catalogs. This need can be integrated to the SAP SRM system and third party catalogs. Third party catalog means third party company, third party any organization, third party organization, they okay, group uh, number of suppliers catalogs and they provide to the client. They provide to the clients. 
that way we have an example like a SciQuest catalogs. SciQuest catalogs. Okay, here we can see how it is going to integrate SRM MDM catalogs. SRM catalog catalog. This will be integrated to the SRM system, SRM GUI, and in addition to this one, this can be integrated to the user interface also. User interface with the help of with the help of iViews. That is a business package. Business package. And this can be integrated to the SRM system. Here we have a iViews. Here we have a OCI. That means SRM provided, SRM provided interface is that open catalog interface. Okay, for this one what we have to do? We have to maintain the table entries. Once we maintain the table entries, the system is going to have an integration from SRM to SRM MDM catalogs. SRM MDM catalogs. And this can be SRM system can be integrated to the third party catalogs. SideQuest. Okay, third party catalogs. Here, right, we have a OCI, open catalog interface, open catalog interface. From this one, what we have, we can get the, we can select the required catalog, required product, required product from the third party, third party, and we can create a shopping cart, we can create a shopping cart, okay. The catalog information will be integrated to the SRM, uh, okay, uh, from third party to SRM with the help of OCI, with the help of OCI, okay. That means shopping cart data will be replicated from SRM system to SciQuest with the help of OCI information and products can be replicated from SciQuest to the SRM system with the help of OCI, okay. Suppose if we want to replicate purchase order information, purchase order information. The, the main purpose of purchase order information is once the shopping cart is converted to SAP, uh, converted uh, to purchase order in the SRM system, that can be distributed to the SciQuest. From the SciQuest, they will send it to the suppliers, their partners. For that one, if we want to have that kind of integration from SciQuest to SRM or SRM to, Sci SRM to SciQuest, we have to have a PI integration. We have to have a PI integration, process integration, process integration. That way, SciQuest or third party can be integrated like uh, to, with the help of OCI and PI also, OCI and PI. Okay. In addition to this, SAP system can integrate it to any non-SAP system. Okay. With PI. With PI. And in addition to this one, it can be integrated to the BI for reports purpose, BI BW. For this one, only we create a RFC integration. Only we create RFC integration. That means SRM system can be integrated to any non-SAP system. It can be integrated to SciQuest third party, third party catalogs. It can be integrated to the SRM MDM catalogs. Okay, it can be integrated to the SAP system for SRM MM integration, SRM FI integration or SRM any uh, planning system and it can be integrated to the SUS system that is the supplier self services and it can be integrated to the BW system. In addition to this, we have a one more system e-sourcing and CLM. Like at present we have a SAP Sourcing 7. Nothing but e-sourcing and CLM. Okay. At present we don't have any SAP standard communication. For this one we have to have a custom integration like PI. SAP Sourcing 7. Okay. That way it can be integrated to any system but we have to have a different type of communication, different type of communication. Those type of communication may be, those type of communication may be ALE, IDAC, okay, 
second one is RFC, third one is PI, RFC means that comes BAPI also. Okay, these are the main communication settings and in addition to that we have a CRM middleware. CRM middleware settings. Okay, this way we have a number of communications to complete the integration from SAP SRM system to other systems. Any doubt up to here? This is the main integration like whenever you go to the project, right? You can say if it is implementation phase, okay? You can discuss with the business team how different systems can be integrated, okay? How these systems can be integrated. As a functional analyst, we have to have an idea this integration points. Integration points means how the system can be integrated. Uh, Anthony, like for this one, right, SAP provided different kind of voices notes or some kind of patches to have a SRM, like inter Internet Explorer purpose. Or, like a, a, a Firefox is working fine. Okay. Do we, will we have any need of uh, implementing Safari? Can, you know, can it also be compatible for SRM service, Safari? Safari, that is, is that a browser? Yeah, that's an Apple browser. That I have no idea. Okay. No, there I may just, be there may be a compatibility. SAP provides some kind of patches to that browser or something they will provide. Gotcha. Okay. Thank that you. I never worked on that. Uh, uh, see, I worked for the clients where we have Internet Explorer or Firefox, because yeah. wherever I went, uh, like all the projects, okay, they did not provide Apple laptops. Okay. Yeah, because we have clients, uh, some some clients are in the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. They tend to support or heavily depend on Apple laptops or Apple. Right. Yeah, I think they, that, uh, that one I need to search in the Google. There may be, like okay. if that, that won't work initially, right, they will provide some kind of option to have a access for user interface. Okay. Because even Apple also have the SAP implementation, right? And whether they have a SRM or I, I don't have an idea. Okay. But they will provide okay. some kind of patches or something if they, that, that doesn't work also. Okay. okay. This is the user interface what I was discussing. Like whenever we have an integration, right? This is done with the iViews and everything. For this one, we have a iViews to create a shopping cart. To create a shopping cart, we have a different... This is the eye view. Like if we want to create a shopping cart, we can see like once we create this one, right? The system is going to have a information. Uh, the system is going to give the pop-up message to have a, uh, uh, to provide the required information. Here if we want to have it in the description and required data and work and you can continue complete the shopping cart. Okay. See from this one, right? SRM is integrated to the, yeah, uh, mainly right when we go to the project, most of the clients have now SAP system as a backend system. SAP system as a backend system. Okay, that means whenever you, uh, like, uh, whenever you say uh, work on SRM or you have a knowledge on the SRM, what we can say, we, we integrated SRM and MM, SRM and FI. Okay, in addition to this, if you have implemented or if you have like a SIP, you have a knowledge something and the SRM MDM catalogs. That way, you can say like you work like you have an idea on the SRM MDM catalogs loading and integration of this one. Okay, and whenever we have a planning system, we have a PDP, plan driven procurement that we are going to discuss. Mainly, we have to understand up to here is what type of communication is available and how what are the integration points from one system to other system? Okay, mainly we saw four types of communications. Okay, this I cannot say as a communication. Okay, this is a CRM middleware tool which is used for replication purpose. Communication is ALI, IDAC, RFC and PI. These three are the integration type of uh, uh, integration tools. RFC communication, 
KLE IDA integration and PI integration. Any questions up to here? Okay. Okay. Now I will compare SRM purchasing to SAP MM purchasing. SAP SRM purchasing to SAP purchasing and what is the main difference between these two? Okay. In first I will take a SAP purchasing. and SRM purchasing. SRM purchasing. SAP purchasing means the uh, business people starts with the, suppose whenever there is a requirement, they will start with the purchase requisition. Okay, they will start with the purchase requisition. Once the purchase requisition is approved, that means released, released, that may goes to the RFQ. Request for quotation, quotation maintenance, quotation management, okay. Next one is the once is the finalized PO. Here this step is we are going to determine the supplier, determine vendor, determine vendor. PO will be created and the PO will be sent to the, PO will be sent to the supplier and once the supplier will send the acknowledgement, Next step is a GR, goods receipt, goods receipt. Next one is the invoice verification. That means we are posting a goods products into SAP system. Here we are getting the invoice, invoice one. That is the inbound invoice. See invoice also we have two types. Whenever it is related to sales, we call it as a outbound invoice or billing document. Here we have inbound invoice. Once that is done, that goes to the payment process. Payment process. Okay, this way we have a SAP purchasing cycle. When we go to the SRM, the terminology, you can see the difference here. The main terminology, instead of having purchase requisition, we have a shopping cart. We have a shopping cart, okay. Once the shopping cart is created, if we don't find any suitable supplier, okay, what we can do? We can have a bidding process. We can have a bidding process. That means RFX process. RFX. Okay, RFX process. That means RFX will be sent to the supplier. Supplier will have a, based on the integration tools, we have a different tools in the SAP SRM. SAP SRM, that means we have a live auction component, LAC, live auction component, or SUS integration. If we have directly supplier, okay, can uh, update the bids process, bid process, okay, bidding process. That means they can enter into the our system. That means we, can, we will, a client provides the uh, URL to access the RFX to access the RFX and they respond for that bid. That means they receive a bid or like a bid invitation, they respond for that bid. Okay, once we can confirm, okay, we'll award the bid. Awarding the bid. See, if we, like, if a client don't have, client doesn't have like a, uh, the LAC component or SUS component, Okay, we have a different process. It is called a surrogate bidding. Surrogate bidding means buyer, buyer will submit bid behalf of supplier. That means buyer will log into the system and buyer will process the RFX, RFX. That way, based on the client software tools, 
Okay, we have a bidding process. Bidding process can be placed in the SRM system. In SAP system, we have a RFQ, request for quotation, request for quotation, okay, and quotation. This is done by the responsible persons. Once the award is uh, like our, uh, our uh, uh, quotation, instead of quotation management, we have award bid. Once that is done, we can go to the PO or that can be converted into the contract. That can be converted into the contract, PO contract. PUR contract. In the contract, right, we have a different types of contracts. In SRM, we have a different type of contracts. We have a central contract. Central contracts, local contracts. global outline agreements. Okay, we will discuss all these three type of contracts, how it works and what are the main difference between these contracts and how it can be utilized for our purchasing process. Okay, these things we will discuss. Okay, and PUR contract, once this is done, here we call it as a, instead of goods received, we call it as a confirmation. Confirmation. Okay, once the confirmation is done, we can force the invoice verification. That is inbound invoice. Once that is done, we don't have a payment process in the SRM system. The invoice data will be replicated to the required system and payment process, that is FI postings will be done in the respective backend system. Respective backend system. Okay, respective backend system. This is the purchasing cycle. Purchasing cycle means where it will start, where it ends. That means in SAP, we take SAP system, SAP system that starts with the PR and ends with the invoice verification. Before this one, we have a different process to have an integration from HD module to HD module to MMHD integration and MMPP integration. That means MMHD integration means whenever we have a sales order, that once we run the planning run for sales order, that can be converted into the planned order Okay, if it is an internal manufacturing that goes to the planned production order, if it is external procurement, it comes to the PR. Okay, that means MMHD integration means, get an idea only here. MMHD integration means, okay, once we receive the customer order, once we receive the customer order, okay, once we receive the customer order, based on the sales order, sales order, that is a make to order processing or or uh, like retail, if it is a retail industry, right? If it is a retail industry, they don't manufacture anything. Okay, we will run the planning run for this HD strategy 10 or something is that once we have this one, okay, this can be, okay, with planning run, we have a planned order with the help of planning run. Okay, planned order can be converted into the PR or production order. If it is an internal manufacturing, it converts into the production order or PR. PR will come to the our purchasing. That way it is integrated to the integrated to the SAP MM like MM to the SD. And if we take MMPP, MMPP. Okay, suppose if we take a HP laptop. HP laptop. They started manufacturing. They started manufacturing. Okay. They will always, most of the time, they buy a RAMs from the different companies like Kingston. That means whenever they receive the huge order, they, okay, or based on the, based on the planning, based on the forecasting, they will run the planning. They will run the planning. Okay. Once the planning is done, when the planning is done for Kingston or any RAM or memory, or memory, okay, the system create a purchase requisition. That means initial step is a planned order and next one is the P, a PR because they are not manufacturing memories uh, internally. 
memory center only. For that one, what they will do? They will get the memories from the different suppliers, different suppliers. For that one, they have to create a purchase requisition process. Okay. If they keep the stock, the system is going to create a reservation. That way, right, depends on the stock, depends on the uh, settings. Okay. The system is going to create a purchase requisition. That means production planning, production process is integrated to the MM. This way we have an integration. And when we have a FI integration, FI especially we are going to discuss MM FI integration, sorry, SRM FI integration, SRM MM integration, SRM HR integration. These three we are going to discuss in detail. Any doubts up to here? Yeah, Anthony, tell me. Uh, no, sir. Can you give us some examples and some insight into the plant maintenance component of an integration with SRM as well? Plant maintenance. Okay. Plant maintenance, right? We have a mainly plant maintenance. We create a service orders. Okay. Service request. Those service request related information can be replicated to the SRM system. Once that is done, okay, service request will be replicated from plant maintenance order to SRM system. In the SRM system, we are going to determine the who is the source of supply for their services. Okay, that way it is integrated. Plant maintenance means repair purpose, right? Mainly maintenance, uh, main, uh, like uh, preventive maintenance or like a different type of plant maintenance we have. Plant maintenance mainly we create a maintenance order that is a service order. Okay, based on the request that can be replicated into the SAP SRM system. Okay, once we have a SRM, SRM uh, that uh, plant maintenance request is available as an external requirement document in the SRM system. Okay, that can be processed with the help of different type of source of supply determination. That can be done with the bidding process or directly we can have a uh, vendor, uh, vendor information. For that, we can create a service entry sheet or maintenance orders. Okay. So, so in that case, what is the flow then, Shiva? Uh, okay. What is the flow, sir? Is it, is it service request directly to source determination or how is the flow in a service? He, here, I, I, I will give, uh, it depends on the ECC component, depends on the SAP component, we have a different process. Here, I will take okay. e ECC 6 with EHP 4. Okay. This is a 6 enhancement fact 4. Okay. If we have this component is activated and purchasing related component is activated in ECC 6 system. Okay. okay. Automatically that is, okay, PR or requisition can be converted into the RFX. Okay. That RFX is, RFX will be processed in the SRM system. Okay. That means once the RFX process is done, that will be awarded. Once this is awarded, that can be converted into the purchase order or contract based on the terms. Like suppose we have a maintenance order. Every month, if we need maintenance, what we will do? We will have a scheduling agreement or contract. Right. Okay. That way, RFX will be converted or awarded into the required document. That may be a purchase order or part of uh, our contract. Okay. So, okay. so pretty much these, these plant maintenance orders are nothing but, but MRO orders. Yeah. In short. Right. MROs. Yeah. MROs. And, and, and the flow will start from SRM, but it would not come from plant maintenance, right? So, I mean, it, it's pretty much separating the demand from SRM via catalog or free text or whatever. See, it, it demand comes from, demand comes from the SAP backend system only. That may be SCM system or SAP plant maintenance system, whatever it is, that comes from the backend system. In SRM, the main purpose of SRM is to determine the source of supply. Okay. Okay, here we don't create it, uh, like we don't have any planning. Okay, planning related object is not available in SRM system. Okay. Only the source of supply determination can be done with the different processes. That may be RFX process or buyer can directly determine the source of supply and create a required document. Okay. Did you understand? Uh, did I answer your question? Yeah, you did. Thank you. You are welcome. 
and if it is less than like before EHP4, EHP4, PR can be replicated to the external requirement document only. We, that cannot be replicated as RFX. That is the main difference from EHP4 to lower versions. Now, uh, yeah. RFX. Hello. No, sir, sir, RFX. I did not get your question. No, it's RFX. It's request for proposal. Yeah, proposal or RFX request for information or request for quotation. We have IX means that can can be a P or I or Q. RFI, RFX, RFP. Who is this? Ishwar? Ah, Ishwar. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you should tell me. The requirement for BI, BM, SRM, is this a plan driven procurement or is it external, you can say external requirement? That is plan driven, whenever we have a plan driven requirement related, when we convert into the SRM system, right, we will call it like a like uh, that can be comes as a uh, external requirement or something. I don't, I, I need to check that one exactly. Here, right, when we go to the shopping cart or like a purchasing, okay, we have an external requirement document. I will see and, uh, okay, okay. Uh, update on that one. Okay, next one we will discuss about the implementation scenarios. Okay. Uh, at the same time, right, while discussing the, discussing about the implementation scenarios, I am going to discuss about roles also. Okay. Same time, I, can, I will discuss the roles also. In SRM, okay, implementation scenarios, mainly we have a four types of implementation scenarios four types of implementation scenarios. First one is the classic scenario. Extended classic. Decoupled. Standalone. Mainly when we go to the project, we can see one of these. Either classic or extended classic scenario. Either classic or extended classic scenario. Okay, when we will, uh, when we can advise to, uh, when we can advise classic scenario or extended classic to the client. Like when uh, already they have a SAP system, SAP MM is implemented and they are running on the SAP system. And now the client is, this, the client decided to implement SRM system. Client decided implement SRM system. Okay, for that reason what we can do, if client doesn't want to spend money on training, doesn't want to spend money, much money on the training, then we can suggest classic scenario because they have a purchase requisition process, purchase order process and everything, but they want to have a internet related procurement with browser, browser related procurement with SAP SRM system. If that is the case, if that is the case, okay, they can implement SAP SRM with classic scenario. Okay, if they are in the SAP system, 
and they want to implement a SAP SRM system and in addition to that they want to utilize all the related bidding functionality bidding related functionality RFX and everything all the in-depth uh, in uh, information related one then they can go for extended classic scenario they can go for extended classic scenario and if they are implementing SAP and SRM both we can advise client to implement extended classic scenario to utilize SRM related functionalities like a bidding process and which is not in the, uh, like available in SAP system okay whenever we have a live action component live action component right like a bidding process and everything is available in the SAP SRM system that way we can advise extended classic scenario and uh, <coughs> If they are implementing e sourcing also, SAP sourcing, SAP sourcing, at that time they can implement the classic scenario, classic scenario. Because in SAP sourcing, SAP ECC, like uh, if we have this component, SRM7, SRM7, okay, SAP sourcing, ECC. EHP latest version okay five version or something if they are implementing if they are implementing this process or if they are upgrading from ECC ECC lawyer SAP lawyer version to the ECC enhancement pack four, uh, four or five and SAP sourcing and SRM 7 because this scenario we are doing now SAP SRM 7 and SAP sourcing we are implementing for the client okay for the client and they are having a ECC enhancement fact 4 at that time what we have we are implementing classic scenario because SAP sourcing SAP sourcing and ECC enhancement pack 4 or ECC system are tightly integrated tightly integrated that means SAP provided integration related standard and in integration from ECC to to uh, ECC to SAP sourcing seven. Okay, and SRM so seven to ECC uh, SAP sourcing they don't have any integration. They don't have any integration. For that one, right? What we will do? Okay, in SRM, in SRM, if we implement the classic scenario. Okay, first I will discuss the classic scenario. In the classic scenario, I have a SRM system. I have a SRM system. Here I have a ECC system. Here I have a ECC system. Okay, and the SAP sourcing system. SAP sourcing system. Okay, in SRM system, shopping cart will be created. Shopping cart will be created. shopping cart will be created once it is approved once it is approved okay once it is approved this can be converted as a PR reservation or PO when PR will be created Okay, whenever there is any sufficient sufficient data in SRM shopping cart, whenever there is insufficient data in the shopping cart, that can be converted and replicated as a PR in the ECC system. This is based on the settings which we are going to see when the system is going to create a purchase requisition, reservation or purchase order. Okay. And whenever like if it is a stock material, if the stock is available, shopping cart will be converted to the reservation. That is also depends on configuration setting. Okay. Once the shopping cart is approved, if everything, all the data is available in the shopping cart level, the system is going to convert as a PO. 
that means source of supply is available, purchase price information available, everything is available in the shopping cart. Once it is approved, that can be converted into the PO. That means the leading PO is available in ECC system. Leading PO. in ECC system. Leading PV is available in ECC system. Okay, once you suppose Shopping cart is created. There is no source of supply. There is no source of supply. Okay. Source of supply. Then the system, SRM system, okay, a convert, uh, uh, SRM AC is converted into the PR and replicate like a PR in ECC system. Once the PR is created with SAP standard provided integration, that is SAP provided standard interfaces, this can be converted as a RFX. RFX. Okay, standard interface is that we need to activate the XI related component. We need to activate the XI related component. RFX that can be converted, awarded, like a, a supplier will respond with a supplier portal and they will, that once that is done, okay, best RFX will be determined and will be awarded. Once it is awarded, once it is awarded, okay, this RFX will be, this RFX will be convert, uh, converted and uh, sent as a PO. As a PO. Okay, that means Suppose if we have, if we implement the extended class 6 scenario, if we implement the extended class 6 scenario, okay, here I will give the extended class 6. Extended class 6, okay, shopping cart will be created in SRN system. Shopping cart is approved. Once it is approved, right? Once it is approved, if we are using a sourcing system, okay, what we have to do? After approval, this needs to be sent to the e-sourcing system as a RFX. For this one, we don't have SAP, no SAP standard one interface that is okay because of that reason whenever you are implementing whenever you are implementing SRM and SAP sourcing SAP sourcing see this is at the present at present in the future they may develop they are planning to develop SRM and SAP sourcing integration also at present I am discussing in the future there may be a difference based on the based on the software provided by SAP. Okay, there is no standard for that reason, right? If you implement the extended class 6 scenario, you have to develop this integration. Integration. This is expensive. That's the reason, right? We can advise to the client. They can go for classic scenario whenever they implement SRM, SRM 7 and SAP sourcing 7. SAP sourcing. Okay. That way, based on the business, based on the business, based on the implementation, software implementation, we need to advise to the client which type of scenario can be implemented. Which type of scenario can be implemented. Okay. When the shopping cart is created in the classic scenario, it is approved that can be replicated as a PR or reservation or PO. 
Okay, depends on the configuration settings. We are going to discuss that one. Once the PIVA is created, this is a regular process only. Goods are received, invoice verification. Goods are received or invoice verification. Okay, this PIVA information will be updated in the shopping cart as a relative, relate, uh, uh, related documents. And goods received document number will be updated in the shopping cart as a related document. Invoice, uh, update, invoice information will be updated in the shopping cart related documents. This way we can see on the system how the system is going to update. Okay, this is the one scenario or like uh, we can post the confirmation in the SRM system also. Or invoice verification. That is depends on the business, how they want to have their business. Okay. And it is once it is done, in the shopping, extended classic scenario, once it is approved, right, shopping cart is approved, PIVA will be created. PIVA will be created in the SRM system. Once the PIVA is created, confirmation can be posted in SRM system. Once it is there, if it is the stock material, if it is a stock material, Okay, stock material, goods receipt needs to be posted to maintain the inventory. If it is not the stock material, we don't need to have a confirmation or something like a goods receipt. Okay, and this one, next one is the invoice verification. Invoice verification, this one can be as per our discussion, right? This will be done with the ALE settings. Here no ALE, directly here right this step we don't have any ALE settings kind of thing. Automatically with SAP and SRM integration the system is going to, SRM system is going to replicate SC data, shopping cart data into required document into the ECC system. Okay, here we have to have a ALE settings. Here, right, the PIVA will be replicated into the SAP system. This is a mandatory step. But we cannot make any changes in the SAP system. We cannot make any changes in the SAP system. Whatever you want to make the changes or creating a PIVA, that can be done only in the SAP SRN system. Here, right, if we post the goods received directly in the SAP system, that won't be replicated to the SRM system. But whenever we post the confirmation, that need to be replicated into the SAP system to maintain the inventory, to maintain the inventory. Okay, this one we will discuss again when we start discussing about the self-service procurement with extended classic self-service procurement with extended classic scenario. At this point of time, what you have to remember? You have to remember where the PO is created. That means where the leading PO is available. Where the leading PO is available. That way always like a main difference is from S extended classic to classic scenario is the leading PO is available in SAP system in classic scenario, the leading PO is available in extended classic scenario, uh, leading PO is available in SRM system in extended classic. That is the main difference between classic and extended classic, classic and extended classic scenario. See, whenever we go to the project, whenever we go to the project, one of these two, one of these two implementation process will be there. One of these two implementation process will be there. Okay, this is the integration related one. Okay, we will take a 10 minutes break and we will continue again. That uh, what we are going to cover, we are going to complete decoupled scenario, roles related information and communication. Integration from SAP to SRM, SRM to FI, uh, SRM to SAP integration, SAP to SRM integration. 
that integration we will see and in addition to that okay last five minutes what I am going to cover in the next six weeks I am going to okay give an overview on this one so we will take a 10 minutes break if you have any questions let me know first we will cover, discuss on the questions and then we will take a break Mainly SAP sourcing is the tool like a different software and SRM sourcing comes with SRM 7 or any SRM software. SAP sourcing is a different tool totally and that can be like we have an SAP sourcing, we have a contract lifecycle management, RFX process and once we have a SAP sourcing, once we have a SAP sourcing, okay, and the supplier can have a a portal automatically. We don't need to develop, we don't need to develop any supplier portal related one or we don't need to have a supplier self-services. Once a client have a SAP sourcing, once a client has a SAP sourcing, okay, they will have a supplier portal also, supplier portal also. For them, we uh, uh, administrators provide the different access. With that access, they can access the SAP sourcing system and they can bid or they can send the bidding information to the buyer. That means we have a buyer portal and supplier portal and a, a enterprise person portal. That way we have a like, uh, that is SAP sourcing is a different tool. SRM sourcing is a, comes with SRM system. SRM sourcing doesn't have a supplier portal related uh, integration for that one. If we want to have that, you can go to the different components again. In SAP sourcing, we have everything. Okay, that way right now, we have uh, uh, demand with SRM or demand with uh, like e-sourcing, CLM or SAP sourcing. SAP sourcing has a lot of demand. Okay, not many consultants available in the market. Okay. As a SRM consultant, as a SRM consultant, right, we are not the persons to work on the sourcing side, SAP sourcing. If you are a MM consultant or if you are working for SAP sourcing with SRM7, that time you may be involving to have a baddies related information. Suppose if you are integrating, like if you are integrating SRM shopping cart to SAP sourcing system, SAP sourcing system, we don't have a direct integration. We don't have a direct integration from SRM to SAP sourcing. For that one, as a SRM consultant, you have to provide the required information to the SAP sourcing consultant or you may be involving to design the interface from SRM sourcing, SRM uh, system to SAP sourcing to have a shopping cart information in SAP sourcing. Did I answer your question, Rao? So basically what it says is if there is an MM involved, uh, SAP involved in between, we as an SRM consultant, we just are concerned about getting our purchase acquisition going to or a PO going to an MM. That's, that's where we end, right? Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now we will discuss about the decoupled scenario. Okay, in the decoupled scenario, Okay, we have a SRM system and ECC.
shopping cart will be created. Okay. Approval process. Once it is approved, based on the configuration settings, based on the configuration settings, okay, the shopping cart will be replicated into the backend system, backend system as a PR, a PO, a reservation. That means depends on the setting or PO will be created in PO will be created in SRM system. That means that depends on the settings, depends on the settings. Okay. The system SRM system is going to update shopping shopping cart data in SRM system or ECC system okay as a PO or PR or PO or reservation in the ECC system. Those settings will be available in the configuration. If the configuration configuration will be done based on the product category product category and respective backend system. Respective backend system. Okay, that way we have a configuration. If this is not sufficient for the client requirement, we can implement the baddie like a BBP underscore product underscore determined backend system. That way we have a baddie. With that baddie we can implement and the system SRN system is going to determine what is the required backend system. That means where the shopping cart needs to be updated as a PO or PR or reservation or purchase requisition. Purchase requisition. That way the system SRN system is going to update the information. Once the PO is done rest of the process is same only. There is no difference. Confirmation can be done in SRM system or SAP system. Okay. And next one is invoice verification. This is there is no difference. Only the leading PO can be either in SAP uh, SRM system, either in SAP SRM system or SRM system. How would we differentiate that in SRM? Like this one based on the configuration, like based on the product category and backend system configuration, right? So this is PO is created on SRM, uh -huh. so we'll have the list of POs, right? Uh -huh. So how would we know which PO could be changed? We, we, so we, if we have to know, the only things we could change is where the PO, the POs created in SRM could be changed in SRM. So uh, that's there be uh, that's correct. That leading PO can be either SRM system or ECC system. Okay, on SRM, how would we know? Will it be, is it based on the PO type we decide, or will there be an, uh, some uh, those would be disabled and other would be enabled? Uh, uh, here, right, ECC PO won't be replicated into the SRM system. Oh, okay. Okay, that won't be replicated or like uh, into the SRM system. Then we cannot enter any confirmations to that PO at that. With that reference, area. with reference to shopping cart data, we can do that. Even classic okay. scenario also, right? We can have yeah. a confirmation. Okay, once yeah, we get it. Replicated in the shopping cart itself. Y yes, the shopping cart screen, okay. right? In the shopping cart screen, we have an option to create a confirmation. Oh. Here, when we go to the confirmation like a shopping cart information, we have an option to create a confirmation. From shopping cart data itself, we can create a Thank you. That way, right, we can like uh, uh, in a uh, classic scenario, right, few clients, they are doing like uh, I work for one project, they have a classic scenario, but confirmation is posted in SRM system. Okay, when we go to the as, uh, like as a uh, author uh, based on the role based on the role right we can see that 
shopping cart monitoring okay from that report we have an option we have an option to create or convert shopping cart into confirmation okay that is the main difference here right we can post the goods received there is no difference the main difference is once the shopping cart is created after approval the PO or PR or reservation can be done in the SAP system or PO, leading PO will be created in the SAP SRM system based on the configuration based on the configuration okay the configuration would be product category assignment to the backend system okay if the client is not satisfied with this configuration like they don't want they want to have a product category I will give an example also here Okay, I have a General Motors India and General Motors US. General Motors India and General Motors US. I have a product category 001. Product category is nothing but material group in SRN, uh, SAP system. Product category is nothing but material group in SAP system. Okay, 001 product category is there. For 001 product category, whenever end user create a shopping cart, Okay, once it is approved, once it is approved, okay, shopping cart and P1 needs to be created in SRM system. These two in SRM system for General Motors India. Okay, but once the shopping cart is approved, once the shopping cart is approved, P1 needs to be generated in ECC system for General Motors US. If this is the case, right, only one SRM system I am using for General Motors India and General Motors US. General Motors India and General Motors US, I have only one SRM system. I don't have different systems. Here, General Motors India, whenever the shopping cart is approved, P1 needs to be created in the SRM system. Okay, once the shopping cart is created and approved, P1 needs to be created in the ECC system for General Motors US. This cannot be done as a configuration for decoupled scenario. If this is the case, we have to implement the BADI. In the BADI level, what we can do? Whenever the organization element ID is so and so, okay, backend, backend, uh, backend system should be General Motors India uh, for General Motors India of a SRN system okay for General Motors US ECC is the backend system that way we can configure we can do the baddie because this kind of uh, requirement cannot be uh, is not available is not available in the configuration point of view so we have to implement the baddie okay that way we have a in the decoupled scenario we can implement a baddie or configuration based on the requirement to determine what is the leading PO system what is the leading PO system that way we can create next one is a standalone this is a very simple scenario okay standalone SRM I have ECC I have Okay, then we are not using SAP MM system. We are not using SAP MM system. Only ECC related FI system or backend FI system we have. No materials management system. No materials management system. I never worked on this scenario. I was working mainly. I am. Uh, I have been working either classic or actually classic scenario. Shopping cart will be created in SRM system, and once it is approved, that goes to the sourcing, carry out sourcing, carry out sourcing, and buyer will convert shopping cart into the purchase order. 
buyer will convert shopping cart into purchase order. Once purchase order is done, confirmation in SRM system. Next one, invoice verification also will be done in the SRM system. Once this is done, payment related information will be passed to the FI system. That means there is no materials management system. Only we are using FI system for financial postings. Because SRM system doesn't have any financial related information. SRM doesn't have any financial related information. That way, standalone scenario means everything is done in the SAP SRM system except payment process. Decoupled scenario is nothing but PO leading PO may be in either SRM system or ECC system based on the configuration or BADI implementation or BADI implementation. Extended classic scenario is leading PO is in SRM system leading PO is in SRM system. Confirmation or invoice verification can be done in either SAP or SRM systems. Either SAP or SRM system. And uh, classic scenario, the leading PO is in SAP system. Once a shopping cart is created, based on the shopping cart information and configuration data, SRM system is going to replicate SRM shopping cart data into either reservation or purchase requisition or purchase order into SAP system. Once the, that means leading PO is in SAP system and the next step is confirmation or invoice verification can be done in SRM system or goods received or invoice verification can be done in SAP system. These are the main implementation scenarios. Most of the clients they go with either classic or extended classic based on the business state, uh, implementation status or based on the business requirement or software availability. Okay, this way uh, impl uh, uh, implementation scenarios we have in SAP SRM system. And the next step is roles. This is the main thing when we go to the project as a functional analyst, as a functional analyst, okay, we have to discuss or we have to update basis that is administration team to create a roles, to create a roles. Okay, here I will give an example. What type of roles we have and how it is useful for how what is the, our role in the uh, uh, to define the roles. Okay, we have a uh, whenever we start the SAP SRM implementation, whenever we start SAP SRM implementation, we need to define number of roles. Okay, based on the user group, based on the user group, okay. Uh, based on the user group, we have to define, okay, minimum roles, minimum few roles, okay. We will have a only end users, like who create a shopping cart, who wants to check the status of the shopping cart. Okay, as an end user, right, I can create a shopping cart, I can check the status of my shopping cart. I don't need to have any approval process and I don't need to convert the shopping cart into purchase order or I don't need to convert the shopping cart into RFX process or I don't need to utilize the SAP SRM sourcing. For that one we have a like a employee role. Employee means, employee means who can create a shopping cart and who can check the status of their shopping cart. No approval is required. For that one when we take the standard role, when we take the standard role, okay, SAP SRM standard role provides create a shopping cart okay create a shopping cart check the status of the shopping cart okay confirmation also is available approval also available this is the standard role. This is the standard. But in the real time, in the real time, we cannot provide we cannot provide the confirmation process and approval process. 
approval process. Okay, when we come to the create a shopping cart, we have a three types of cr uh, shopping cart creation. One is the wizard method, single screen, expert level, expert level. Okay, these two will be employee role, employee role, and this can be expert means that person can create a shopping cart on behalf of and limit shopping cart and personal also. That way we have a additional functionality in expert level okay suppose one contractor is recruited only to handle the shopping carts one contractor is recruited for creating a shopping carts on behalf of the whole department on behalf of the whole department that person can have a, this role Okay, that person can have this role. And create a shopping cart and check on the status. Okay, and confirmation approval is required, not required. Okay, approval is not required. For that one, we have to create a custom role. We have to create a custom role. That means, as a uh, 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 as a functional analyst, what we have to do? Okay, in create a shopping cart, we have three methods. Which methods can be provided to employee role? That means we have a BBP SC02, BBP SC03, and BBP SC04. As a consultant, as a functional analyst, we have to provide these three transaction codes can be assigned to a custom employee role. Okay, this is our responsibility related to role maintenance. This is our responsibility. Okay, what kind of transactions can be assigned? What kind of transactions can be assigned to a group, like a role? Okay, and to whom we need to provide the authorization. Okay, this way we can provide to the administrator or basis team, okay, basis person. That person is going to create a role and role is assigned to a, a group of people. That means employee role will be assigned to all the people, all employees. Okay, if we take approver, Maybe approval, maybe 10% of the employees may, be approved, may hold a, a, a approval role. Like a manager, manager or like a manager, vice president, IT director, HR president. This way we have it based on the role, right? Approval, approver can have a, approver can have a, approval role. And in addition to that, that approval person, okay, will be given authorization to change the shopping cart. Okay, that way we decide. Okay, that is based on the level, based on the level, the change access will be provided. Change access will be provided. Okay, where we can provide the change access, we will discuss later. Any doubt on this one, how we can have a roles in the SRM system? This is the example I give. When we discuss about the employee self-service procurement and like uh, uh, extended classic scenario and classic scenario, we will discuss few more roles, okay, why we need to have a custom roles. Why do we need to have a custom? Why we are not able to use the standard roles? Okay, and there we can discuss what are the minimum roles which we need to define and what is our responsibility on that. Okay, any questions on that? That roles definition. Okay, and next one, we will go to the integration part. We'll go to the integration part, SAP and SRM integration.
SAP and SRM integration. What we have to have first? First, I will give the brief step-by-step uh, -step process and we can see on the system. We can see on the system how we can have a SAP and SRM integration. First one is, first step is define logical system. See this what most of the projects basis administrator person will do. Administration person we will do. But better to have an idea. If there is any problem, we are the responsible person to answer the business team. Basis team is not the responsible person to answer the business team. That's the reason we have to have an idea how the systems are integrated. Okay, if there is any problem, we should be in a position to okay determine what's the exact issue. That way we will see whatever like all the even basis related also. Okay, define logical system. Define logical system is when we go to the SRM system and ECC system. Two systems we have, right? We are going to integrate SAP and SRM systems. In SRM system, we will define SRM logical system, SAP logical system. In ECC system, SAP logical system, SRM logical system. The naming convention would be, the naming convention would be, system ID, system ID, CLNT, CLNT and client number. First three characters, four character, three characters, total ten characters, alphanumeric. alphanumeric. Okay, total 10. Okay, this is the naming convention which we follow for defining a logical system. Okay, next one is assign logical system to the client. Here we have SRM, ECC, SRM and ECC, in SRM, SRM logical system assigned to SRM client. ECC logical system assigned to ECC logical system. Sorry, ECC logical ECC client. Okay, this is the third step. Next third step is third step we have communication channel. communication channel. In a communication channel, what we will do? In a communication channel, we will create a, in a SRM system, RFC destination, RFC destination, for ECC system. That means ECC logical system name ECC logical system name and ECC user ID details will be provided in the SRM system. ECC system 
RFC destination for SRM system. Okay, that way we have a communication channel. Okay, we will see all these steps and once it is done, we have a system landscape. System landscape means where we are creating a system landscape in SRM system. Based on that one, financial validation will be done. Financial validation will be done. And in addition to the financial and documents which are replicated with the help of uh, RFC, that landscape will be utilized. Okay. We will see these steps in the, our SAP and SRM systems. Here I am not going to change this information because if I change this logical system name, there is a lot of impact on the system data. Lot of impact on the system data. Once if I if we change this logical system name right, the system we cannot replicate the master data. Okay. For that one, if we want to replicate, we have to run the lot of batch jobs backend. Okay to convert the logical system information to the new logical system. That way we have, will have a lot of headache, but getting an idea, I am going to show how we can create a logical system and we can, how we can assign the logical system and how we can, but I can delete the communication channel and create a communication channel, there won't be an issue, but I am not going to touch the logical system names. Because whenever we refresh, right, client refresh, client refresh means we have a every three months, one second. Hello. Who is this? Oh, my name is Sean. I, I was looking at your ad to take note of that at the end of the training. Uh -huh. Uh, when does it start or did it already start? I started, I am in the middle of the class. If you want to attend, I can give me an uh, email, I will send the meeting invitation to you, you can attend. You can continue on the class. Oh, but you, uh, you already started it? Yeah, just today only I started. Oh, just today only you started? Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, at what email is it? Yeah, give me your email later, I will send that meeting by invitation. Sorry guys, one minute, I will uh, continue class. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, give me your email later. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I will repeat your email ID. Uh, Z for Junior, I for Ice Cream, C for, uh, S for Sunday, H for Henry, J for Alpha, M for Man, dot. No, no, no. M for Nancy. Okay. Dot A H M E D. Ahmed. Right. At Yahoo dot com. Jishan dot at Aham. Ahmed dot at Yahoo dot com. Right. Right. And uh, uh, is this like uh, how does it work? Now I am in the class. If you want to attend, you can attend the class. I am going to send the go-to-meeting invitation. I am not uh, like I am in the middle of the class. Okay. I will send an e email with meeting invitation. You can uh, you can attend that meeting. Okay. Okay. Go to meeting. One second, I am going to send and he wants to see. One second, please. Okay. Okay, now I am logging into the both the systems, SAP and uh, SRM systems, to show how we can communicate, how we can integrate these two systems. Okay. Uh, I logged in already SAP, SRM system. Okay, I will log into the SAP system now. Okay, 
Okay, I am using the 800 client. Okay, as per our discussion, first we need to define the logical systems. Logical systems. Okay, how we can define the logical systems? We'll have a transactions. We'll have a transaction. Okay, based on that one, we can create a logical system. The transaction code is S A L E. S A L E. Here I will note down on the our note notepad also. Here this can be done with like S A L E. S A L E. That is the transaction code to define the logical system and assign logical system to the client. Okay, this is the SRM system. This is the SRM system, and I will get into the S A L E transaction code and basic settings basic settings logical system define logical systems define logical systems okay this is table is cross client here i will give an explanation what is the cross client okay as a functional analyst right sometimes sometimes interviewer may ask what is the cross client what is the client dependent What is the cross client and what is the client dependent? Okay, we have a that way. I am going to give an explanation here and where we can see whether it is a client, cross client or client dependent or uh, client independent data. Okay, this one cross client. Cross client is nothing but client independent. client independent that means whatever the data is available this is available in all the clients this is available in all the clients and server dependent server dependent server dependent okay whatever we are creating a logical systems that data is client independent that is a cross client and server dependent server dependent that means here we have a two servers right two servers okay two servers we have one is for SRM ECC server ECC server. That means whatever we define the logical systems, we need to define the logical system in both the systems. In both the systems. Because logical system data is cross client, that is a client independent and server dependent. Server dependent. That means we are working under two servers, SRM server and ECC server. Suppose we have a SRM server, we have 800 client and 100 client. Okay, if I define a logical system in 800 client, if I define a client in the logical system in the 800 client, that logical system will be available in the 100 client also. Okay, that logical system available in the 100 client also. That is a client independent, client independent. Here we can see whenever you go to any table. Okay, I will go to the SAP system. I will go to the SC11. EKKO display here right the first column is the MANDT MANDT and this is a key field also Whenever the table has MANDT, MANDC has the field in the table, that means that table is cross like a client dependent, client dependent data. Okay, whenever any particular table doesn't have the client field as a key field, okay, that table is the client independent client independent. That way we can find whether the table is client dependent or client independent. Client independent means cross client. When I try to create a 
when I try to create the logical system, the system is giving a pop-up message as a table is cross client. Table is a cross client. That means if I define any logical system in the 800, that logical system can be seen in the 100 client or any client which are which are available on that particular server. Any question on this one? This is important when you give an interview, right? One of my friend was asked this question in the interview. What is the dependence between different between the class client and client uh, in the client dependent client independent? Here, right? I am going to use SRM zero because here I did not follow. Like whenever I got this IDS server, right? This was the logical system. I did not touch this logical system as I told you, right? When I change the logical system name, I need to do lot of settings. That's the reason I avoided do uh, uh, I avoided to change the logical system name. Please don't disturb this logical system name also. Okay, if we like new entries we have, only if we create a new entries, automatically the system asks us to provide what are the new entry, logical system name and description. Okay, this is only a table entries, not related to like any like configuration. Only we need to go to the SALA, go to the basic settings, define the logical system name. Okay, as per our discussion, as per our discussion, we have a logical system. In the logical system name definition, in the SRM system, we have to define the SAP, like SRM logical system, SRM logical system and SAP logical system in SRM system and SAP logical system and SRM logical system in ECC system. Now I am doing in the SAP SRM system. Here I need to have a T90 CLND 090 and SRM 00800. In the real time, okay, whenever the basis admin, basis person create a logical system, they follow this naming convention. They, they follow this naming convention. Suppose if they have a QA system, QAS CLNT 100 or 800, whatever the client, that way they do. If it is P, production related one, PR, PRD CLNT 100 or 800, that way they will have a logical system naming convention. Okay. If it is a SRM related one, SRQ CLNT, if it is related to a ECC system, most of the clients what they will do ECQ or EQAS. This way we have to cross check the logical systems in both the systems. Like uh, uh, SRM logical system, SAP logical system and SRM system. And the same thing I need to cross check. Like if it is not available, right? This is the basis people responsibility. As our responsibility is only we need to cross check whether it is pro correctly configured or not. Here I need to check the SRM logical system name. SRM logical system name is SRM underscore 00 underscore 800. Okay, T90 CLNT 090. Okay, we have two logical systems in, in both the systems. Once that is done, what is the next step we have? We have assigned logical system to the client. First, I will go to the SRM system. SRM logical system assigned to SRM client. Okay. I will go to the SRM system. Assign logical system to client. Okay. Here I have a 800 client. Because I am lo I logged into the 800, I am checking about the 800 related configuration. Okay, I have 800 client. When you go to the details, okay, SRM 800, it is assigned to the SRM 00800. That means in the SRM system, SRM 800 client should be assigned to SRM client, SRM logical system. That way we have to cross check. This is our step. This is our step. Okay, same thing we need to cross check in the SAP system also. I will go back. Assign logical system to the client. Here 800 client. Okay. Go to details. Here 800 client. T90 CLND 090. Which is related to. Which is related to SAP logical system. SAP logical system. That way we need to cross check. Okay. Once that is done. We are done with the past two steps. 
and third step we are going to discuss here communication channel okay communication channel i will go to first srm system communication channel here you can do the communication create rfc communication from sali transaction code or sm59 okay sm59 and this is related to abap connections okay abap connection here we have a because we are in the srm system we are in the srm system when we go to the discuss, uh, our discussion srm rfc destination for ecc system rfc destination for ecc system okay that means i need to cross check t90 because already it is integrated what i can do i can delete and i can recreate this one there won't be any issue but logical system i okay we should be very careful on that i deleted come back again execute sm59 okay go to up select the abap connection create okay what is the rfc destination as per our this uh, step ecc related logical system is the srm rfc destination that means t90 clnt 090 okay description whatever you want you can keep which is a meaningful one okay enter now what is the target host where we can see this target host when we go to the system go to status here we can see the target host like a host, uh, target host right I, I cannot check from srm system i need to check from sap system i will go to the system status here i need to check the target host not a, a source host okay control v and system number where we can get the system number once we are able to log into the sap system right we can see what is the ecc from this one i uh, logged into the target system go to the change item here we can have a system number okay whenever we added into the logon pad from there you can find the system number okay go to 50 provide 50 once you enter automatically the system is going to determine what is the ip address or host name okay both are same or ip address okay here only display only okay next one logon and security what we have to provide here okay mainly we have to provide what is the destination client 800 what is the destination related user information okay this is the destination user information not a source like a source system okay save this entries save this entries check the connection test okay the system is able to connect and in addition to that you can check remote logon that means it has a sap password problem otherwise right the system should log in directly without any issue okay sap user i have if it is everything correct if everything correct the system should be like we can okay we should be in a position to remote logon okay now we can say remote logon now we are successfully directly we are uh, uh, remote login okay this way we need to cross check whether we are able to okay successfully test the connection and remote login once it is done right that means sap srm system is integrated to srm sap system sap srm system is integrated to the srm system okay same way we need to cross check in the sap system also well, I am going to cross check. Here I have a ABAP connections. Okay, I will go to 
what I need to check SRM system related logical system like a destination this is the SRM logical system here already we have everything set up only I need to check connection test okay remote login this done okay this way the two systems are connected the two systems are connected from SAP to SRM, SRM to SAP. Once it is done, we need to work on the uh, system landscape. System landscape. That means the landscape will be created in SAP SRM system. These are the main settings always we need to cross check. One SAP SRM system refreshed, quality system refreshed with the production data. Production data. This is a regular practice we have to cross check. Okay. If basis people said they cross checked, but our side also better to cross check. If something happened, right, we are the responsible persons. Okay, here I am going to have a one more page. What we are going to do on the system landscape. What we are going to do? We are going to in the SRM system. Okay, first I will give the description what we are going to do. Here in the landscape, right? In the landscape, we are going to maintain the SRM and SAP landscape. That means we are grouping these two connections at one place. We are communicating landscape. For that one, what we are going to provide? SRM as a local system okay SAP as a RFC destination RFC system RFC system we will see these things in the SAP SRM system how we are going to where we have this configuration Okay, I will go to the SRM system, go to SPRO, go to SPRO, reference IMG, supply relationship management, SRM server, technical basic settings, Define system landscape. Okay, mainly I need to cross check these two entries. Okay, here description are SRM underscore 00800 T90. Okay, this one T90 CLNT 090 is the backend system. For that reason, we have to provide, we have to provide, we have to provide what is the RFC destination. RFC which was which we created uh, recently okay and what is the system this is the local system okay as per our discussion right SRM is as a local system we have a local system and T90 CLNT 09 ERP3 this one we have to select the suitable system from the provided list of systems okay if we were on the R3 4.7 if we are on R3 4.7 we have R3 4.7 system Okay, if we have like a ERP 6, ECC 6, we have a like a different systems we have ERP 3, Enhancement Pack 3. If we are on ECC 6 with Enhancement Pack 3, you can do this one. If we are in the ERP 6, ECC 6 with Enhancement Pack 4 and activated this component, then we can select this, this system. If we are in ECC 5, ECC 5, you can select this system. RT 4.7 but for that we don't have an ECC 5 related system okay based on that based on the backend system you need to select the system type 
Okay, here we have a in SRM system for local. We don't need to have. And what type of system it is? Okay, here we have to select local system for SRM and RFC is the RFC one. And here we have one more thing. What is the backend validation? Backend validation means for financial data, real time backend API data. Always we keep the real time backend because See, suppose I created a shopping, a shopping cart for one asset and this is approved and everything and the user, end user goes to the, the same day. Okay, if the other user goes to and create a shopping cart, if the budget is available or not, we have the system has to cross check. That means SAP SRM has to determine the real time backend FI data. Okay, if we have special and the budget validation or funding related funds management, if you are working for any public sector, it is very important. Okay, that way we have to check whether it is a real-time backend validation or not. Okay. Next one. This is the one RFC dialog. Based on this RFC communication, based on this RFC communication, okay, the system is going to provide the financial related information. If it is incorrect, we cannot have a financial related information into SRN system. This is the one which we need to cross check always. Okay, what is the RFC communication for RFC dialogue? Okay, once that is done, next one we have a one more step here. This one also we have to cross check. System alias. Okay, based on this one, we will have a POWL navigation. POWL means when we go to the shopping area, these are all related to POWL. If it is not configured, if it is not configured here, like a POWL related one, we cannot see this information. This list won't be displayed if it is incorrect. If it is incorrect or this configuration level. System alias per POWL navigation. This is mainly right. We can get it from basis person and those people are going to configure this one also because it is a landscape whenever basis people create a system setup they are going to create all these settings as a functional analyst okay we have to cross check if there is any issue suppose if the POW is not working first step we have to cross check this one POW is not working we have to cross check this one if it is fine we have to cross check in different way Based on that, we need to have uh, this information and where we can configure this related information also. Okay. This way we need to have a, this is the integration from SAP to SRN system. SAP to SRN system. Any questions up to here? Okay. And now what, uh, like what I am going to cover for next classes. Okay, but tomorrow class what I am going to do, I am going to create a SRM org structure for vendor master data and purchasing organization structure. Because this is the main, purchasing organization structure is the basic, uh, basic org data if we want to replicate material master data. Or if we want to, like if we want to have a vendor master data, right? If we want to have vendor master data from SAP to SRM system, we have to have a purchasing organization company code. That's the reason first we need to discuss about SRM R structure which is related to company code and purchasing organization. Okay, which is related to, that means what we are going to cover tomorrow. We are going to cover, we are going to discuss SRM R structure related to purchasing organization. purchasing organization okay in this one we have a company code information purchasing organization purchasing group data okay once it is done we are going to discuss about vendor org structure After that, vendor replication. Okay, 
these are the data which we are going to this is the content which we are going to discuss tomorrow that means purchasing organization structure vendor organization structure vendor replication okay these things we are going to discuss how we can have what are the differences from SRM 4 or SRM 5 to SRM 7 in this level okay at this level there is there are a differences there are a differences which we are going to discuss tomorrow and finally what we once it is done right we'll, we are going to have a master data replication material master data replication material master data replication we are going to discuss once that is done HR or SRM RG structure SRM architecture we have two types one is the local second one is HR replication we are going to discuss HR replication okay once that is done once that is done we are going to discuss about workflow process controlled workflow which is important which is a new topic in the SRM 7 as a work a process controlled workflow process controlled workflow and the next one is self service procurement here we have a classic extended classic extended classic and We will have a classic with workflow approval process. Workflow approval process, we will take it to different processes here. Okay, next one is the MDM catalogs. MDM catalogs. Once the, uh, that is done, PDP. Next one is RFX contracts, info records, uh, are there any missing topics we will discuss? And mainly I am going to concentrate on monitoring also. Monitoring means IDAC monitoring. and Q monitoring and baddies okay when we have a architecture application right HR level we have a uh, this one early IT, early settings IDOC here also we have a early IDOCs for confirmation portion this way we are going to cover all these topics if anything missed out right we are going to cover like a, uh, going to give like a, a, a SUS related uh, uh, business scenarios how it works but I don't have a system to show on the system theoretically we can discuss and I am going to give brief idea about uh, SAP sourcing SAP sourcing business scenario we can discuss briefly on the SAP sourcing Okay, this way we are going to cover all these topics for next 5 to 6 weeks, 6 to 7 weeks. Okay, any questions on this one, today's discussion? What we completed today? Okay, I will uh, recap everything in 2 minutes and tomorrow uh, when we start the class also, right, we recap everything and then we will go to the new topic. Mainly we discussed today. SRM architecture that means it SRM architecture means SRM system can be integrated to the SAP or non SAP systems SAP system means whenever we discuss about the SAP system we have a uh, SRM FI integration SRM MM integration SRM and planning system integration SRM with third party third party catalog integration SRM with the supplier catalog integration, SRM with MDM catalog integration and SRM with enterprise portal related user interface that is SAP standard one okay and next one we discussed about 
implementation scenarios. In the implementation scenarios, we discussed about four scenarios. One is a classic scenario, extended classic scenario, decoupled scenario and standalone. In a classic scenario, the leading PO will be leading PO in SAP system. SR, uh, extended classic leading PO in SAP. Uh, uh, sorry, extended classic uh, extended classic scenario. Uh, in decoupled scenario, the leading PO may be in either SAP SRM system or SAP system. Standalone scenario means there is no MM system. There is no materials management system. Okay. And only financial data will be passed to the SAP, uh, SAP finance system or non-SAP finance system. And next one we started discussing about the integration from SAP to SRM system. Integration level what we discussed, we discussed about the logical system definition, logical system assignment to the client, okay, and RFC communication and system landscape directory, system SL, uh, like uh, SRM system landscape where we provided SRM system, SRM RFC communication, uh, RFC, SRM is a local system, SAP system as a uh, RFC destination and dialog system is provided for financial validation purpose, SAP system alias is provided for POWL. This way we covered these topics. Tomorrow we are going to cover SRM org structure related to purchasing organization, vendor organization. Once that is done, next class we are going to have a CRM middleware setting for material master data and SRM uh, uh, related organization structure. Any questions up to now? Okay, tomorrow we will have a 8 to 11. I have uh, one question. What uh, do we get to access the system today or uh, will we have to wait till tomorrow? That system access I can provide immediately because I can like uh, within half an hour I can provide. But mainly Please once uh, that one so, right. So it's going to be on the same client? Uh, yeah, same client. So basically nobody can do any uh, big changes in the configuration or anything? Configuration means logical system wise you cannot change cannot change, but can we go at a row, uh, okay, if you want to, what, what are the things we can do and cannot do in a competitive center? Because See, except can... logical system, other things, everything can be done. Okay. okay. Because I can provide the different clients, but as I told you, right, we will change, because I copied other clients also from 800 client. For that one, we have okay. to run the BDLS and everything, lot of stuff is there to run. After that also, it may or may not work for master data replication and everything. Every time, right, you can set up your own master data replication, you can do for master CR okay. middleware settings and there won't be any issue. That one, okay. okay, I am going to show how we can monitor master data replication issues also. We Here we have a replication issues. I am going to show that one how you can fix that. And this one, right, whatever I have this information, right, I am going to have a 